Okay, so I want to do modular stuff by example, and I I modified a little bit of an example that's on the API under the modulo idea, right? So I took this little program, and it it's a little bit modified from one of the examples on the API, just for clarity's sake. So can you guys like tell me some of what's happening here? Okay, there's a couple integers to start with. One's called modulo, one's called actual. They both start at zero. Then I have a setup method here. And this was your address is your question, Chris. This thing in the parentheses is the arguments that the setup method takes. So the setup method is itself doing something and it might require some inputs. Those inputs are gonna be listed in this parentheses and the void is gonna be what it's returning. So this thing's not returning anything, hence its return is void. What do you mean by returning? In other words, if I call this thing later, like if I do, you guys don't even have the syntax for it, but if I ask it to do something later, then it might return to me a number. Like I might set up a calculation over there, right? To return to me the results of this giant thing, right? And so I would call the calculate method and pass it some initial values. Like say I want to know what's a third between a third of the way between two points, right? So I would call the what's the third of the way between two points method, and I would pass that thing four point or four values, right? The x y and x y for two points. And then it would return to me two values, the x and y of the point that's one third of the way between the two things. Does that kind of make sense? So that void is just a, I don't want this to return anything because I'm not going to call it that. So this method setup takes nothing and gives nothing. Is all with that? That is a a little bit past what I care about you knowing today, but later we'll see some examples where we get something back or send something out to a method. Um, so just to clarify, why do you need void setup? Why can't you just say size, compact size, fill, whatever? I certainly could, true? but if I put that outside of the draw method and have a draw method, it'll yell at me. Okay, so, so the void setup just makes it kind of work together with void draw. Yeah, exactly. So see how it's yelling so at me like, this thing return type for a method is missing. It's just like, it's expecting these to be either variables or methods. Okay. Once you've got one method, you need to have everything encapsulated in methods or be variables. Okay. But if you get rid of void, then So if I dump just the void there? It's going to yell at me about this. Static thing. Yeah, it's going to say a return type for a method uh -huh. is missing. Or if I type void and then drop the parentheses, it's going to tell me that it's missing a semicolon because it's expecting me to declare a void variable or something. But I don't want a void variable. That would be bizarre anyway. Those are super cool. What are you talking about? My entire <laughs> stay stay away from null variables if at all possible. <laughs> okay. So what I have here is a setup method that has a size thing, a text size thing, and a fill thing, right? Do we all know what those do? Should I use the random student generator to pick three of you? Or will you just volunteer? <laughs> so what does the size method do? Or size, yeah. I'm calling this a method because it really kind of is, but that's cheating. And then the... Okay, so we set the window, we set the text size, and we set the fill to... It's either black or white. I always forget, and it's totally arbitrary anyway. This one's black. Uh, and then I did void draw, right? So in the draw method, which takes no variables and returns nothing, I've got a background 255. Wait, why is that in here? Because you mixed up background and fill. That seems like legit, right? 
Uh, my claim is that that's actually in here for a reason. And if I had commented my code, you would know what that reason was. How dare you? Exactly, right? Like, this is actually annoying that no one commented this code. Let's go get the commented version. Yeah, so, all right, so I've got a value after modding. That makes sense, an actual value. Like, we covered this setup stuff. Uh, then we, note, we should note when we have a draw method, that thing's special. The processing program causes that to do a special thing, which is loop through every 60th of a second. And then this redraw the background to white thing, we might have to play with, but there's a reason it's right there. And that's happening how many times a second? Yeah, give or take 60 times a second. And then we're, okay, what's this line doing? Close. Is that a variable declaration? It was declared above seven. Yeah, it was declared already. The actual variable was declared up here at the top. To declare a variable, you need a variable type to start that declaration. And it would be weird to have that type here and then set it equal to itself because it wasn't declared before, so it wasn't holding anything. It would yell at you about initializing this variable if you tried that. You could do it in C, but it's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a terrible idea to do that, even if the programming language you're in lets you. Uh, it will kick you all sorts of messy errors about combining the wrong variable types because you'll tr you're trying to stick a null pointer together with an integer and those the apples and oranges that just don't go together. Uh, processing will thankfully yell at you about that. Uh, and then we're doing modulo, which is becoming the actual thing, mod the width. You guys all cool that? So this is where we're going to explore what the modulo command does. And then we're going to draw a vertical line at the modulo in the x direction. right? And then we're going to print out the actual value just because I want to see what it is. Okay. So if I hit go, what do I expect to have happen here? A uh, vertical line traveling left to right across the screen. Nice. There's going to be a vertical line that goes from left to right because that value is happening at modulo comma zero and modulo comma height, right? Uh, so that's a vertical line at the x equals modulo value. So it's going to progress from left to right because I'm adding one to the actual, and then the modulo is made out of the actual. I just realized why you put the background statement in there. OK, why did I put the background statement in there? So that every time it runs through the draw method, it'll go over the previous line that you just drew. Yeah, I don't want it to make a progressive, like, blackening, right? I want it to make a line that moves. You guys see that? So if you want to make a movie, you need to redraw, redraw your background every time. <laughs> That's really cool when you take that out. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a setting sun, right? All right, so... Do you guys see what just happened? So it got to 600, and then what? It, went back to it looped back around, right? And now it's going to get to 1,200 and loop back around. And then it's going to get to 1,800 and <laughs> yeah, loop back around, okay, right? So the modulo is what makes it loop back yeah. around. So the modulo is what makes it loop okay, back around. So with the actual, you could just have it scoot across the screen one time, but it wouldn't loop back around. Yeah, and the computer would would still keep trying to draw the line. It's just outside the window, yeah. right? So we're proving an if statement that says if modulo greater than 600 actual equals 0 or something like that. Yeah, so what you could do is you could implement a way to force modulo, right, by writing an if statement. Mm -hmm. So you could do if the v if actual plus 1 is bigger than the width of the screen, then you'd subtract the width of the screen, right? That's basically what the modulo operator does. It does it in a little more complicated way, but that's basically what it's getting at, right? It should be making a number that's between zero and your width 
out of your thing you're inputting into it. You guys see that? So it's taking whatever the actual value is, which is like almost 6,000 now, and then subtracting multiples of the width until it gets to between zero and the width minus one. You guys all good with that? And that has the effect of keeping this thing on my screen, right? Cool. Questions? <laughs> ah, so, bounce back is tougher, but let's try a slightly different version. And this process is, uh, this highlights one of processing's uh, strangenesses. So, I changed three characters just there. And two of them were in a comment, right? So, what did I do to switch what the idea of what this program ought to do? Yeah, so instead of moving the line from left to right, it should now decrease, right? So it should move from left to right. You guys with me on that? Okay, so we hit run and nothing. Okay, now it's very important that you watch here. When it hits minus 600, you guys all see that? Yeah. What happened? It looped back to zero just once, and then the line moved to the left again. Oh. You guys see what's up here? Yeah. So the, let me, uh, let me put it in another text box here. So let me show you what's happening. So that's printing the actual value out. What if I wanted to print out the modulo value? Uh, is this a good idea to just hit go on this line? Okay. Some of you are saying yes, and some of you are saying no, and I think they're very similar reasons. <laughs> because you understand that what's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to put those two text boxes on top of each other, right? It's going to be really hard to watch what's going on with this number. So I, which direction do I want to move that text box? Maybe down? And how far down should I move it? Yeah, let's move it down another 60 and see if that's enough. Uh, one way you can kind of eyeball that is the text size is 64, right? So I probably have to move at least about that. Okay, so everything's weird, like it's all negative, right? Which I expected out of the actual, but I didn't expect out of the modulo. Oh. F. You guys see what's up? I don't. It shouldn't be moving faster. It just looks like it's moving faster because more of the digits are changing when it gets to towards zero. Um, but what, what's up? What's going on there? It's not returning a value between zero and the width. It's turning a val returning a value between zero and negative the width. That's, that's actually not modulo. The thing that calls it that gets called modulo in processing is not actually a modulo operator it's a remainder operator so normally a modulo operator returns the kind of the distance you are above the last multiple of a number so this would return this should return the distance you are above the last multiple of the width. So when you get to negative one, you're 599 above the last multiple. You guys see that? Because the, the kind of next multiple down is minus 600, and you're 599 above that. You guys see that? But what processing does is the remainder when you divide, which is going to be a negative value if you give it a negative input. Can you just add an absolute value to it? You, yeah, so let's try that. That'll be fun. Uh, so if I want to do modulo, what's the absolute value command in processing? Good guesses? Yeah. Is it ABS parentheses? Probably ABS parentheses. Okay, and it goes from right to left or from left to shoot. Because it's changing the actual after the fact. Yeah, you guys see that? 
like the actual is still negative, but and the modulo is positive now, but it's just going the other direction, right? Well, it's going the other direction because it, it was going from left to right, or sorry, it was going from right to left in the negatives, but then you flipped the whole thing over when you did the absolute value function to it, right? So you want it to actually still go from right to left. This is a really hard lecture because I don't know my right from my left. The end of X. Oh yeah, so you could hard code this to go the other way, but I just want the modulo command to work right. Yeah. You guys see that? Well, did you use absolute value actual mod with uh, if you switched the actual yeah. actual plus one again? Yeah, it's still. Yeah, so you could flip this over. You yeah. could do. I should draw my line at six hundred minus modulo, comma six hundred minus modulo, right? Like that would work. That would get you moving the other direction. Um, another way you could do this, like the way I, the way I was kind of expecting you to do it with the paint program, uh -huh. was something like. If, if what? Oops, that's not the right command for if. Oh my God. Hit an arrow key. So. There you go. So if, maybe if modulo, oh, what the heck. If actual, no, I want, I only want to change the modulo. So if modulo is less than zero, then what do you want to do with it? Yeah, you want to add 600 to it, right, to kick it up. So you just do modulo equals modulo plus 600. So that means that it would count down? Yeah, so now it should count down from 600. Good. And then when, it, when the actual value hits negative 600, it'll go back to zero, right? Which will be 600 in the modulo. You guys see this? So if you want an actual modulo command in here, you do the reg, the like in processing modulo command, and then add one of these statements like, "Hey, if it's act like if the result of the modulo command is negative, add your." And I really shouldn't have hard coded 600, right? Which I actually should have used width there. Okay, and if I want a good comment in my code, I'd go mod isn't actually modding cause processing is weird. Cool. Every, every computer coding language you're going to ever write a program in has some little freaking quirk. It's going to drive you batty when you find them in the next language. Like, C's quirk is... Ben? C's. What's C's most annoying quirk? Um, I know there's one that if you don't instantiate your variables, it will just instantiate them for you, and it doesn't really like putting pretty things in there. Um, is there. I'm sure there's others. I was thinking that it treats strings as character arrays. Oh, yeah, character like, arrays. Like, that's incredibly frustrating. Instead of string variable types, C has character arrays. Yeah. So if you want to print a string out, you always need to use a for loop to get it to happen. Super annoying. Right? Processing apparently has this, their modulo operator isn't a modulo operator, it's a remainder operator. That's the most annoying thing I've found so far. Right? Python 2 has that the, the objects are freaking backwards. Like, the code for writing an object, it's all backwards from what it should be, it's backwards from what it is in every other language, and it's because Python didn't have objects when it was written, and so it's super annoying. Like, that happens. So every language has a like a little thing here or there, and you'll find them as you as you play with a new language. You guys, cool with that. This is as far as I'm concerned. Processing. Question to steal on this. I'm trying to think what what would happen if instead of that if modulo command you said modulo equals uh, parentheses 600 minus actual close parentheses modulo width. 
Sorry, say that again. So if instead of this instead thing, of if, right? So line above. oh, I learned a new thing today. You can un or you can comment or uncomment blocks wow. of code. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Isn't that oh, neat? Okay, and yeah, uh, low up uh, two right. lines to modulo equals actual. Uh, so okay, uh, this guy. Yeah. So, put so it, you uh, modulo equals uh, just yeah modulo equals parentheses six hundred minus actual. Okay, so you want the width minus actual in parentheses. No, six hundred. Well, six hundred is the width. Six hundred minus actual. Six hundred is the width yeah. right now. So, I, yeah, I was just thinking what would happen if you said modulo equals parentheses 600 minus actual close parentheses modulo width. Like this? No, no 600 instead of width. width is they're, they're the same thing. Okay. Right now, the, so the reason I'm using a width variable is if okay. I change the size of the window later, I'd like the program to play nice oh, with that. Oh, I see. Uh, but right now, the the width variable does contain the number 600. So okay. those are actually, at this moment, okay, the same. Cool. So if I do this, it's going to take the width and subtract the actual value, which if the and actual value is positive, yeah, and we'll add it and then mod. So that'll move. Yeah, this should move. Yeah, and then change it to uh, uh, actual equals actual plus one. Oh, so if I add one to this? Or, wait, no, no, never mind, don't do that. So my guess is that this will work as we oh, desired. Same. Yeah, this is right, from left okay. to right. That's what I wanted. Yeah, I was just curious about And that. I am curious about if we yeah. changed it to plus one. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, very nice. So you could do that instead of the if modulo was. I want to see what happens here when we get the it should move around. Oh, no. oh, oh, bummer. Oh, that's where it <laughs> because it's still not a modulo command, right? So once the actual exceeded the width, it went off the screen and I didn't see. know what to do with it. I see. And so now every time it hits a multiple of 600, it'll pop back in and then disappear again. Oh, bummer. Okay. That totally yep. makes sense now. Yeah, so I think that if statement is the kind of go to for fixing the modulo command, if you have a mod that might need negative numbers. Cool? Questions?